Hello everyone, my name is Ariel and today I am bringing you my April TBR, which is technically just my Owls TBR for the Owls Magical Readathon that is hosted by Gia over at Book Roast. I'm sure you guys know of her, but I'm going to link her channel down below in the announcement video and all of the links to all the things. And I am super hyped. The Magical Readathon is one of my favorite readathons I look forward to every single time. I mean, I only participated the first time last year, but I know um, I did the Owls, I did the Newts, and then I did the Magical Winter like Readathon, which was amazing. And that's probably been like my favorite readathon so far because it was like a choose your own adventure. But I have a ton of fun <laughs> with this readathon. I love it so much. I am just filled with so much magic and whimsy and it is amazing. I love Harry Potter. I'm just super excited. Last year I went for the job of Magizoologist, which now that I've accomplished that, the thing that I want to go for now is a ministry worker. My <laughs> heart still lives with magical creatures, so my focus as a ministry worker is going to be for the Department of Regulation and Control of Magical Creatures, and also I'm going to be doing some extracurriculars that weren't available last year. Those are like extra things like certificates and stuff like that that you you can say that you have received. So I want to do dragon taming, which I have to, we'll get to the prompt for that later, as well as I was named after Ariel the mermaid. I love mermaids, so I want to be able to learn the language of mer people or mermish, and that one just requires me to take an extra class for both my owls and my newts. I also think that I can do the legal defense of magical creatures. I think I already meet the requirements with my owls and my newts that I'm doing for that, but I will double check. But without further do, I'm gonna get into my TBR for April and for the readathon. So first off, of course, I have to take care of magical creatures and the prompt for that is buck beak and to read a book with a creature on it that has a beak. Doesn't matter if it's a bird or, you know, an octopus or just anything that has a beak. Could be a pterodactyl. For this, I have chosen The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins and you'll notice a theme because I'm trying to prep myself for the next book that's coming out in May. So yes, of course, we've got the little Mockingjay bird right there. It's got a beak. So I'm pretty sure everyone knows what The Hunger Games is about. I'm highly anticipating the new prequel book to come out. Um, I know a lot of people are judging it, but I want to read it and kind of make my own thoughts and opinions on it. So I'm super actually really kind of hyped for it. I actually never finished reading the series. I started reading Mockingjay and I never finished it. And also I saw, I saw the first Mockingjay movie, but I know it was split in two and I never got around to seeing the second half. I have been spoiled for quite a lot, but I still really don't know how everything wraps up in the end. Anyways, so I'm really looking forward to recapturing this journey. So for Care of Magical Creatures, I am reading The Hunger Games. Charms, we are learning a Lumos Maxima, and the prompt for that is to read a book with a white or mostly white cover on the front. And for that, I have chosen The Merciful Crow by Margaret Owen. I have this book. I got it as part of, I think, a fairy loot box. And I haven't read it. Sounds interesting. I believe there's like different casts of people and there's like the crow cast, which are like the lowest of the low and they are in charge of like reaping like the dead bodies or whatever. That's interesting. Fascinating to me actually. And I actually have the arc of the second book, but I haven't read the first one. Um, we got it delivered at work and no one had even owned The Merciful Crow. So I decided to pick it up. So I want to read this so then I can get to the arc, which comes out later in in the year. So yeah, and this has a mostly white cover. I know we've got a lot of blue and stuff going on, but like all of this negative space is white. So I'm gonna consider it mostly white. I was gonna read The Raven Boys, but everything's shut down right now, so I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to get it in time. So this is a little bit of a tentative TBR. Most likely I'll read this. If not, I'll probably read The Raven Boys, which you already know what The Raven Boys is about. Both have to do with birds, apparently. That's a theme for this readathon because we got a lot of birds. The next prompt is History of Magic, and that is Witch Hunts, and that is to read a book that has witches or contains witches. And for this I am reading The Witch's Boy by Kelly Barnhill. Kelly Barnhill I think is mostly famous for um, The Girl Who Drank the Moon which I won, an, I won an award and I know a lot of people like that. I actually haven't read that book. Also has to do with witches but I don't own that book. I do however own this and I don't know too much about it. When Ned and his identical twin brother tumble from their raft into a raging river only Ned survives. Villagers are convinced the wrong boy lived but when a bandit king comes to steal the magic Ned's mother a witch is meant to protect. It's Ned who safeguards the magic and summons the strength to protect his family and community. Sounds cute. So I'm gonna read it and we're gonna like it. It's about 
about witches, or at least it's got a witch, so it fits the prompt, and there we go. The next class I have to take is potions, and that is a shrinking solution, and that is to read a book under 150 pages. I was gonna read a manga, but like all the mangas that I have were like actually over 150 pages, and I was like, whoa, that's weird. But I do have this book, which I meant to read a while ago. Um, I was supposed to read it for school. Never did. I took horror literature class. Horror. Did I say horror? Horror literature class. And this was one of the reads we were supposed to read, and that was Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner by Samuel Taylor Coolidge. This has got like illustrated. I'm pretty sure this is just like one epic poem. This is only 59 pages. Apparently, I guess it's got some spooky elements in it. I don't know if it's about mutiny. I really don't know what it's about. I was supposed to read in class, never did, but I have it. So I might as well read it. And I know a lot, I feel like I see people reference this, but I don't know what it's about. So anyways, I have it. I figured I would read it because I really don't know what else I physically own that could go for that. That's what I'm picking for that. So I accidentally skipped Defense of the Dark, Defense Against the Dark Arts. And that was Grindylo. And that was to read something by like the coast or by the sea or like in the ocean I believe right yeah by the sea or the coast and so for that I've got Catching Fire by Suzanne Collins because I know in the second arena they're literally like on like an island or there's like a beach area and I know they start off in the sea because of course duh we got Finnick with his freaking titan triton thing so uh I'm making this count for that so I have Catching Fire by Suzanne Collins for my Defense Against the Dark Arts read and uh yeah this is, I know I liked this one better than the first one. I'm, I'm really actually interested to see what I think about these going back to them because I feel like a lot of people are rereading them and they're like, yeah, these were okay, but I don't know why everyone was obsessed with them to begin with. I think it was just the concept that people were like, holy crap, kids killing each other? Whoa. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> this is my <laughs> Defense Against the Dark Arts read. Next, we have Transfiguration, which is an Animagus lecture, and that is to read a book that includes shape shifting. And for that, I have picked a reread although I might read this if I have enough time and also read the sequel because I really want to read I love this book that I'm about to show you guys and I want to read the next one but I want to reread this one before I get to the next one anyways they both contain shape-shifting so either would work um, and that is Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare our main character Tesla spoiler alert you find out she can shape-shift um, but there's also I'm pretty sure like werewolves I don't know if they're in this one but I know it's talked about in this world it's probably gonna be coming up but yeah so our main character she actually can shape-shift I'm gonna read this and I'm super happy about it I listen I'm probably gonna re-listen to the audiobook. I loved this book. I gave it five out of five stars. I'm excited to reread it. Like you know, I'm trying to continue on with the Mortal Instruments and the Infernal Devices and reading them in publication order. I have, like I said, already read this. I'm supposed to read Clockwork Prince next, but I want to reread this. I don't know how many times I've said that, so I'm choosing this for Transfiguration. Okay, and then for my extracurriculars, am I saying that right? Why do I feel like I'm saying that wrong? Extracurriculars? Yeah, okay. So for my extracurriculars, I have to take Herbology, which I think is for my mermaid language class seminar and that is to read a book that starts with M. And guess what I'm reading for that? Mockingjay by Suzanne Collins. You already knew ahead of this I said that I wanted to um finish the whole series this month so I can get excited for the new one that's coming out. So yeah I'm gonna be reading the whole trilogy <laughs> this month and like, like I said the theme with birds wasn't going away. I don't know how like I said how this wrapped up. I've never actually read this book. I've had it but since it came out um, 30% off at Costco. I'm excited to now that I finally read it since I've owned it all this time and see how it all wraps up. And the last one for my dragon taming certificate, which can we actually do this in school? This seems kind of dangerous, but whatever. I'm taking it anyways. And that is to read a book that contains a dragon or is about a dragon. And originally I was going to do the tea dragon festival. We'll pop up a picture right there. We'll see if I can actually get my hands on it because the world is not coming to an end. However, it seems like it is. It's not though. Um, everything's gonna be fine. I've already read the Tea Dragon Society and I wanted to read the Tea Dragon Festival just to kind of give me like a fun little easy read. If I can get my hands on it, I will read that probably for this prompt. However, if I cannot, I do have a backup choice which I will show you guys right now. And that is Damsel by Lana K. Arnold. I attempted to read this last year. I did like a try a chapter tag and I was really intrigued with the chapter that I read. I just chose not to go and read a different book. However, I do want to read this. I've I actually got some pretty low ratings, but I feel like there's some intense content warnings in this. I don't know what they are. Um, however, if you're curious or if you want to be forewarned about that, I would actually look into this book. This is about kind of 
from what I understand is about a girl who was woken up by someone um, who has kissed her from this like enchanted sleep and now she is forced to marry them. Anyways it starts off with our main character, well not our main character but the prince or whoever he is like going to the castle and slaying the dragon. So it does contain a dragon. This will be my backup pick if I can't get a hold of the tea dragon festival. And anyways so I mean I'm probably gonna have a lot more time on my hands. We'll see how long this you know craziness lasts but for right now this is my tentative April TBR if I can fit anything else into my reading schedule, which who knows, then I will obviously include it in my wrap up. But for the most part, this is probably what it's going to be. <laughs> Let me know <laughs> what you guys are planning on reading for the Magical Readathon, if you're participating and what job you're going for, and also which house you belong to. I was part of Hufflepuff last year. I might switch over to Gryffindor. I feel like 2020 is very Gryffindor aerial, very Gryffindor energy for me. I'm just being a little bit bolder than I used to be. We'll see if that's actually a good thing. I mean Hufflepuffs are great too. I love Hufflepuffs, but I don't know. I think I'm gonna be team Gryffindor this year. I don't know. Are we allowed to change? But anyways, <laughs> thank you for sticking through this weird video with me. I hope you guys are all doing well. Stay safe. Stay inside if you can. Try and look forward to like happy things and things that will bring us positivity because I know the world is crazy right now and all I can just say is that you know thank you and stay safe um hopefully I will see you guys next time and bye for now <laughs>